Time to have a wee chat about Halloween. It rolls around this time each year. And how do we as Christians respond to it? Well, it's actually been and gone because it was on Tuesday night. Yes. But the thing is, a lot of Christians struggle with this. Some people don't care in the slightest and they get on board and they have Halloween parties and they go trick-or-treating. And other people find it really dark. And churches put on light parties, an alternative for families to come along and let their kids dress up and have a great time. Now, I was part of this on Tuesday night doing face painting for kids and it was wonderful to see the community actually come together and have fun. But what are the issues with this and why is this such a huge cultural celebration over in the States? Yeah, let's uh, talk to our resident expert on these matters, Jeff McPherson from Grace Theological College. Good morning, sir. Good morning and happy All Souls Day. Ah, yes. Okay, what is that all about? So let, let's talk yeah. about why it's such a massive thing in America. Yeah, so so this is all connected. Um, it goes back, obviously, it go way, way back into the past. So Halloween, as I understand it, so if you think of the Lord's Prayer, uh, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Mm -hmm. So to be hallowed is to be a saint or saintly or to be, you know, glorified. So hello, Halloween was All Hallows Eve. It was the evening before All Saints Day, which was yesterday. Uh -huh. Okay. Today's All Souls Day. Yesterday was All Saints Day. And the, not, and the day before that was All um, was Halloween, um, Hallows Eve. So it, it was observed, Halloween was observed on 31st of October. And it was when I think people would get together to remember and celebrate all the, all the saints in the church, you know, all the holy men and women of the past, and to acknowledge them. And it was supposed to be like a, a religious festival um, where the church, I think it was partly acknowledging the martyrs, you know, those who mm. died for their faith. Yep. Yeah. And that's how it started. And then how did it sort of become this thing where people dress up like ghosts and ghouls and witches and wizards and all these creepy vampire looking things and walking down the streets and then knocking on people's doors and, and asking for them? chocolate? <laughs> yeah. Well, it, if you think about it, it's, it's probably not too hard to see how it, it, it kind of morphed. So um, it's about remembering those who have passed away. And so people's minds are going to be turning towards those who are deceased, those who are dead. Mm. And and so, the, you know, people would often go to the tombs or the, the graveyards to light candles, to place flowers or whatever you might do in your culture. And then it, some argue it kind of got mixed up with a Celtic festival called Sowin, which is was like a harvest festival, which occurred on the, on the 1st of November. And that's when there's supposed to be a, a very thin veil between the world of the living and the world of the dead. Um, so, you know, if you throw in a bit of cultural stuff, and you've, you've got this sort of history that it becomes more of a festival rather than a faith observance, mm. you can kind of see how it how it morphs um, into oh, yeah. this more of a celebration, really. Absolutely, and you can see how in a capitalist society, the, you know, commercial treat companies and all the confectionery companies got on board and said, yes, this is a great opportunity to make some money here as well. Oh, totally. I've been going into the warehouse lately, and I'm sure every store is the same. But for the last month, I've been selling costumes and and, and stuff like that, you know, candy and whatever. Oh, gosh, we call it candy. I used to call it <laughs> Look what you did. Um, <laughs> it, as I think about it as well, coming back to the idea of even the, the dress ups, um, there are a lot of cultures where when they are talking about the things of the dead or the spiritual world, there's this idea that you dress up as the thing to scare off the thing. You know, so mm. they'll have people who dress up as, uh, you know, the, the departed or whatever. And it's the idea of being able to scare away the, the evil spirits and things like that, which, you know, comes from those superstitions. So I can kind of get maybe where the idea of dressing up as something scary might have started to cross over into, you know, what's become our modern celebrations of Halloween. Is that is that fair? Yeah, I, th I think that's kind of what it was. It, it sort of became associated with obviously death, yep. which you can see the connection. Um, you know, things, so skeletons, coffins, ghosts, and all of that. And I guess part of it was making fun, you know, like we, hum, human nature, we do that, don't we? We like to celebrate, we like to scare each other. There's a, a famous poem, I think Robbie Burns wrote, and about Halloween, and it's kind of interesting, he's an old Scottish poet. Um, he he talks about, it was like a, people playing pranks on each other, um, trying to scare each other. Um, it, it, interestingly, actually, 31st of October was when Martin Luther went and nailed his 95 theses to the door of the church in Wittenberg. Why? 
because he knew everyone was going to be out. Well, this is the argument. They knew he knew everyone was going to be out and about, sort of celebrating, right. and he was going to get maximum exposure. So since mm. then, for actually a lot of people, it's been Reformation Day, thirty yes. first uh, of October. What are the issues that Christians have with Halloween, and and how should we sort of respond with grace? Yeah, you, and I think it's a really important question. So first of all, I think we have a degree of liberty of conscience on this issue. You know, there is a freedom that we have in Christ as to how we deal with this within the context of our our culture and our family and our faith. But um, I, I noted down four things. I, I, I wrote down the word um, superstitious ideas. You know, um, it, it, like it seems fun and jokey and all that. And, and um, there is that, I think, a big part of it that is a big part of it for most people. But I think there is a real danger that we can get caught up with like false ideas. Um, and we can be bound by certain rituals and ceremonies. You know, when Paul and Barnabas were in Lystra, they, they performed a miracle and the, the uh, people were like, hey, Paul is Zeus and Barnabas is, is Apollo. Mm. Um, and they weren't gonna make a sacrifice to them. And you know, you could that's the end result of superstition. Um, you know, we could have said, ah, oh, it's nothing, it's, Zeus is nothing and Apollo is nothing. But for those people, it was real. Mm. So I think there is a danger of superstitious ideas. Um, the other thing I don't like about Halloween, and this is, you know, more personal for me, is I think it glorifies evil and make it, maybe makes it seem really sexy. Um, mm. You know, I think it, it can make it look like... Um, sort of glorifying and making fun of things that we as Christians know that we shouldn't mess around with. Mm. Um, we know that he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. Uh, but there is, as we all know, there is reality behind the idea, these ideas and these images, you know, evil is real. Um, and so, yeah, let's not make it really sexy and cool. That's a really interesting point you make there because I personally would have an issue with one of my kids trying to dress up like the devil because it's making light of something that's very real to me and very, you know, dark. But on the other hand, at the church light party where I was painting faces, a little kid came up to me, maybe five or six years old, and said, can you do a devil on one half of my face and an angel on the other? And I went, sure, and I did that. So it's interesting how we have different sensitivities to different things. And would you say that we have to be careful based on our own walk with God and the things that we individually struggle with, like you said, superstition? Because I think with superstition, it's when we start thinking that we have the power to change things in our world rather than God having that power based on our own decisions or actions. Yeah, or even that these things have a power over us that we are unable to control. Mm. Um, so it goes it goes both ways with superstition. And so, yeah, I I wonder, you know, like, so we are living, as we get reminded, in a post-Christian kind of cultural context. And so I wonder if this is filling up a void in a lot of, a lot of our friends and neighbours and mm. workmates' lives. And so what, you know, the question then is, how do we as Christians speak into this with, with the gospel, you know, with the good news? Um, like one of the things I don't like at Halloween is it just seems so scary. You know, I'm not into, I hate horror movies, I'm, you know, things like that. I just don't like it. And so is it, is it a great thing to be, you know, doing zombies and witches and ghosts and all that? Um, and let's focus instead on love and joy and peace, you know, the fruit of the spirit. Um, the freedom that we have in Christ, the forgiveness, you know. In fact, one of the things that the the, um, the reformers, they kind of tried to steer people away from these kinds of celebrations, Luther and and, and John Calvin as well, because they, they sort of saw that they were distracting people away from the gospel, like the simplicity of, mm. you know, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ yeah. um, and your sins will be forgiven. Um, and, and, you know, uh, Luther was like, okay, you know, these things are okay, but don't forget about Jesus. So you know, let's put more focus on that. And it's interesting too to think when you discover, even when you're saying that, thinking about the idea of superstition, that we can sometimes point to people outside the church and say, aha, look how superstitious those people are. Um, but even within streams of Christianity these days, and I don't just mean the more traditional ones as well, even say like in Pentecostal circles, you can have a certain belief that if I do a certain thing or say a thing a certain way, it's going to bring this 
quote unquote curse upon me if I, you know, don't tithe regularly, then God's going to come and knock my house down if I don't, you know, whatever it is. So this this thing of of my behavior somehow invoking some dark forces onto my life um, is actually something that still can run through the human mm. condition, even if you are a Christian and have been for a long time. Totally. And, and I think that's also, this is where the whole grace element comes into it, because as, as Christians, you know, we can kind of sometimes come across as being really grumpy and angsty and, mm. you know, just sort of like party poopers over Halloween and, and condemning and not come as well. With, yeah. With grace and love and kindness and, and pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ and, and the love that he offers and the forgiveness he offers. Yeah. So it's, it's a really difficult. And, and I think part of that is because we, it maybe is triggers us a little bit as well. And mm. especially if you've had a background that has been dominated by darkness and, and, and evil and p- potentially um, spiritual dynamics that are not of God. Yeah, totally. We're going to react. Mm. So, so, so interesting. Let's, um, yeah. Let's make it a gospel day. Yeah. And maybe if it is something that we really struggle with and we sort of are more inclined to go towards fear, we can pray that God would give us peace and that we would overflow in love for our neighbors. Yeah, totally. And, you know, it's an, why not have those conversations? Um, yeah. Do you, do you go out, do you walk around the neighborhood with your friends? I know some Christians who do that and yeah. they, they don't necessarily dress up as ghosts and ghoulies. They, you know, as uh, Mandalorian or whatever it is. Yeah. And um, you can have, you know, talk to your neighbors, talk to your friends. Um, that, that's a gospel opportunity. Well, I mean, I love that as a, as a kind of a closing thought on this as well, that, uh, you know, because we can look at this one particular day as well. And sometimes you hear people talk about it like the fate of Western civilization depends on how we as a nation respond to Halloween or some other kind of event like that. But um, as you say, I think if we have strong community connections with people as well, right, that we are the kind of people that people look at Christians and say, you know what, they might not do all the same stuff that I do, but there's something about the, the love and the graciousness that I see from them, something about that, that gospel thing they talk about, even if they don't know to use those words, that is compelling, that can create more of an opportunity for the other 364 days of the year that still are available to us. Yeah, totally. Yeah, love that idea.